Yeah, so my name is Brian Weinstein. Uh, I'm a solution consultant here at Workado um, on the embedded platform team. And so today I'm going to be talking about the uh, embedded platform solutions offering, solution offering, right? So what is the embedded platform? Um, what, what does it do and how it can help uh, you and your, more importantly, your customers uh, integrate and automate their different applications together. So a little bit about Workado uh, just before we begin. Um, Workado is a market leader in, in the integration and automation space, um, powering mission critical business processes for some of the largest and fastest growing companies in the world. Um, we are really humbled and thankful to our over 7,000 now customers um, who have entrusted us with their support in this journey. So um, our earlier sessions of Workado Kitchen have been focused on achieving automations at scale for many of our direct customers, but today's session will be focused on another segment called the Embedded Platform, which targets uh, top B2B SaaS companies and product vendors who want to leverage us in their integration and automation journey. So adding to the large set of direct customers as an embedded platform team, uh, we have been seeing really, really large stagger, honestly staggering growth in the last 18 months. Um, being part of this embedded team, I'm really excited to show you today um, how we can help you on that integration journey. So um, as an application vendor, uh, why would you be interested in this embedded integration and automation platform? Um, the reason is that there's been a massive explosion in app usage across all major lines of business. Um, and we've been seeing a 30% increase in SaaS apps used by businesses. So even in a single business use case, there can be many applications that need to be integrated. Um, this means that customer information is spread out across many different applications um, and it becomes a necessity to, a necessity to uh, have access across all these applications and, and share data between them. Um, and this is becoming increasingly more important as more businesses are leveraging specialized cloud applications. So as specialization um, uh, is disseminated, you know, as it grows throughout the business, um, you need more and more help with integrating those applications together. So with this demand for integrations between the growing number of applications, teams have to assess how to create scalable solutions. And we have seen several approaches. Um, application vendors have made significant strides in this space through providing APIs, um, but APIs alone don't solve the problem, right? Uh, sometimes in order to leverage the APIs, you need to have advanced product knowledge um, as well as have access to sandbox environments for each one. So often the difficult job of leveraging, you know, application vendor APIs can fall on customer success or professional services. And um, those custom coding costs add up. Uh, ven app vendors often, you know, they can have integration referrals, um, which work well for small use cases, but scalability can become um, questionable during the sales cycle, right? Um, and the final option, right, there is to, is to build in-house. So more than 60 of our, our embedded platform partners have taken this route, um, uh, but due to the demands of integration and automation, ended up partnering with us to, to help bridge the gap Right, they maybe still used some of those integrations that are they'd already built instead of just flat out replace them. Um, but they they used us to to take it to the next level, right? Um, so that brings us to building versus buying, right? So over time, as you grow, the answer to some of the you know the building versus buying questions can change, right? Um, there's cost, right? The number of integrations, um, and of course, the complexity of the integrations, they all play a role in determining if an iPass is right for you. So a quick stat is that over 70% of the largest SaaS companies out there offer an app store for integrations. Um, it's something that it just has to be offered. I think it's, it's table stakes at this point if you want to scale. So um, when does it make sense to build? Because it does make sense to build some of the time, right? It makes sense when the user experience is paramount and your use cases are very narrow and they will remain static. Um, if it's also strategically important, it might also make sense to build um, depending on the size of your company. Um, and as far as when it makes sense to buy, that's a bit different, right? One important factor is speed and time to market, which is really critical in the growth stages of a, in, you know, in our ultra competitive landscape, right? Uh, another factor, um, is you is, is, I guess, your product team and the team that is responsible for building it. So uh, that team, of course, needs to have bandwidth to focus on the core features 
And if they don't have that time, they will get bogged down on maintaining these integrations. Um, and even if you offer only 10 or 20 integrations, you know, how many of these need to be customized for each customer? Um, so uh, a quick story here is that uh, we actually have a partner, Tango Card, that used a combination of building and buying in their solution. So for the most for their most important integration, um, Salesforce, they decided to build it themselves, um, but used Workado for the rest. Um, so, you know, there, there can be a balance there between building and buying, and we encourage that. So um, how does the embedded solution for Mercado come into play? Um, how I bring the power of the, how, you know, how do I bring the power of this platform to my customers while still preserving the uh, really important seamless user experience that I've worked so hard to give them as a, as a product owner, right? I've worked so hard to provide them this, this very um, carefully put together user experience and I wanna preserve that. So through this embedded offering, we're providing a robust, uh, flexible, and most importantly, scalable solution for um, you folks that are looking to partner with us in their integration journey. So why Workato? Um, with a foundation in Workato's best in breed, and low code iPaaS technology, the Workato embedded platform layers a multi tenanted solution architecture, uh, critical management capabilities, and an outcome oriented approach to implementation that efficiently solves your in product integration and automation needs. Uh, the embedded platform customer has a global um, administrative instance of Workato. So um, the embedded platform customer in this case being you. Right, so you account. So, so, so I guess your account is where you build out, test, and deploy uh, recipe templates. Um, and global administrators can manage customer accounts, the governance of the governance of those accounts, and recipe distribution um, programmatically. Uh, so we give you the option to to manage all that through the UI if you want to, or programmatically if you need to. Um, the global administrator account can also be used as a demo instance for pre-sales efforts. And this scalable approach allows you to create templates for the common business processes you'd like to automate for your customers. So that once they're deployed to your customer accounts, they can be modified based on their unique business needs, right? Uh, common modifications your customers would make to a recipe include, um, you know, of course, authentication to their different applications, um, custom field mapping, logic and configuration, and other customer specific business process considerations. So, um, Workato is built to provide the most efficient, secure, and of course, like I said, scalable solution for teams looking to solve in product um, integration challenges. Um, and, and the Workato embedded uh, par platform partners, so what it will be you guys, could take our existing iPaaS platform and the connectors that we already have in our, in, in, in our ecosystem to solve for the technical challenges of integrations and automations and turn their attention to the core products that are unique to their market and customers. So you guys, what that means is that you guys can take, you know, what we have done, um, use it to instantly upgrade your 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 application and the and the features that you guys offer, and then return back to enhancing the things that you guys do already do well, which is your core product, right? Um, embedded integrations from a solution like Workato alleviates those engineering teams from setting up from or from staffing up, I should say. Um, for expertise in API building and frees up scum, scrum teams for from DevOps work um, to focus on new feature capabilities that are unique problems for the target market and product. Um, and since Workato takes on the burden of API maintenance, uh, post implementation platform management can live with non technical roles like product management, product owners, or business analyst roles who will leverage the global administrative account to manage accounts and develop and distribute new recipes. Um, so what's the experience like for my customers? I'm sure you're asking yourself right now, right? There are several different ways to deploy or embed the platform in your application. Uh, it, take, it depends on several factors, but everything is managed through a specific combination of APIs and iframes. So if speed is important to you, then um, taking a partner managed approach is probably best. Uh, this option allows you to embed iPaaS and brand as your own. Um, this can be rolled out with little effort and time in weeks. Um, another option is the seamless redirect. So you can simply provide a link for your customers that takes them to a branded and customized instance of Workato. Uh, this Workato instance has a very simple and intuitive interface and with a built-in marketplace that your customers can use to search for different integrations and install them. Finally, uh, there is our uh, fully integrated option. 
through a combination of, like I said, APIs and iframes, you can build essentially any part of the Rocado platform directly into your product, um, which is something uh, pretty cool, I think. And we have customers across each of these different deployment models. Um, and many of those customers um, that, you know, you know, use a combination of these things depending on the customer that they're talking to. Um, and many of our customers have actually, or partners, I should say, uh, have matured from left to right. So, which would, you know, whatever suits their strategy at that time as they grow. Um, and at the end of the day here, the bottom line is that our solution is highly configurable to fit your product. And then now we're gonna do another quick poll. Um, you know, based on the, the configurations that I've, that I've already talked about, um, which ones align to your ideal integration strategy? So we have pre-built integrations, a branded experience, or the fully, uh, you know, embedded integrations. So go ahead and, and answer, and then um, and then we'll see. All right. So it looks like um, most people prefer pre-built integrations, but it also seems like it was pretty um, widely distributed, right? And that's okay. Right. I think most of our most of our new partners um, before they I think understand what goes into embedding Workado fully, um, they probably want to offer like a pre-built integration. And that's fine. Um, thankfully, Workado is flexible enough to accommodate for all of those use cases. So now that we have talked about the different, you know, what actually embedded is and what the uh, you know what some strategies around deploying Workado embedded are, um, I want to actually. Uh, show you what Workado is, right? And, and demonstrate the power of this platform um, and, and what, what actually goes into embedding it. So um, one quick note before we begin the demo, um, I wanna talk a little bit about the two types of personas that we'll be exploring as it relates to the embedded platform. So we have uh, both an embedded, um, embedded partner perspective, so that's you, um, and an embedded end customer, end customer perspective, so that's your customers. Um, keep these persona names in mind as I go through the demo. Uh, and I think that will illustrate how each of these different personas might leverage the platform differently. So um, in this case, Acme, as an embedded partner, uh, which is again, you, right, might have an integration administrator or a professional services or a customer success manager that actually manages the embedded experience for their customers. Um, and Clone or Pied Piper, uh, as embedded in customers, meaning your customers, might be administrators or users within their business and IT departments. So let's actually dig in here and I'll show you um, what it would look like. So this is a little demo environment that we put together to illustrate how all these pieces fit together. Um, and right now I'm in uh, Acme ERP's uh, integration hub. Right, and I'm logged in as Pied Piper. So I'm in this case, I'm Pied Piper. I'm the customer, and I'm logged into Acme ERP. Here, I can see a dashboard of um, some of the activity that's gone that's gone on in my account. Um, but the really cool part here is going to be in this little connect section here. So um, as Pied Piper, I might have a few different ideas about the kind of integrations and automations that I want to implement. Right, um, and as Acme ERP, I can display um, some of the uh, applications that you guys might have recipes already built for, um, or some of the things that you think your customers might um, want to see here, right? And you can organize them in any way you want. Um, you can pull these from Workado itself um, and then display all the different kinds of options that you might want to provide, right? So let's say as Pied Piper, I want to integrate um, Acme with Salesforce. So my instance of Acme with Salesforce. So I click on Salesforce here and I'm displayed with, um, uh, you know, a, a few different things here. Um, the first, and for, first thing I probably wanna do is actually connect to my Salesforce instance. So um, I can actually click connect to Salesforce and I'm, I'm presented with this little iframe here. So this is actually something really cool. This is an iframe that's linked to, um, to Pied Piper's own uh, Workado workspace, right? So their own tenant. So that's really important in, the, um, in, in how Workado is architected is we have a multi-tenant approach to architecture, meaning that Pied Piper as a Workado customer or as, a, as an Acme ERP customer, I have my own workspace and I have my own set of connections uh, into the different applications that I want to integrate with. So in this case, I have, I'm integrating into Salesforce and I can, I can, when I click connect here, I'll authenticate into Salesforce and my, my Salesforce connection will be, um, con will list as connected in my, um, in my account here. So if I click connect, I just log into Salesforce. This is an OAuth flow. So I'll be redirected 
um, back into Workato, and then it should say connected and now I'm connected to, to Salesforce. Now that, now that I'm connected to Salesforce, I have a few different options as far as what I can do here in this integration environment, right? We have this, this concept that you might want to offer your customers called quick syncs, right? So these are pre-built recipes that you um, load into the customer's workspace, right? So in, into Pied Piper's workspace and um, give them the option where there's not really a whole lot of like, you know, configuration that needs to happen before they can just run the sync, right? So it's, it's pretty low on the configuration, not a whole lot of like remapping. So let's say as, as Pied Piper, I want to sync issues from Acme with Salesforce cases. So I can click on this and I'm presented with some details around what the sync is. And then um, a few different configuration uh, options here as well. So um, as, as uh, Pied Piper, I might want to uh, you know, dictate what the Salesforce case status should be when the Acme issue is, is, is in the new state um, in Acme. So what I can do is I can actually select from, um, from this list of Salesforce case statuses, uh, what I want the mapping to actually be. So something really cool here is that um, we're actually using um, a couple things here. We're using a um, metadata, metadata API in the back end that actually goes into Salesforce, pulls that list of Salesforce case statuses and displays them here to the user. So even if the user has a really, you know, has like a hundred different Salesforce case statuses for some reason, right? Um, we can display them all here and they'll, they'll be able to see all the things that are unique to their account. Um, and then through our pick list APIs, you're able to actually set these values in the recipe itself before you run it, um, which, is, which is also really, really cool. So if I want to um, set these as my example, right? I can go ahead and um, click start, right? And the recipe should run with these two parameters set. Right, um, and the way that that works is through our, you know, our API platform, um, or I'm sorry, our, our platform API. Um, a little different. I want to click start, and it actually will go through the API on the back end and start Workato. Uh, start the sorry, start this recipe in Workato, and the sync will begin. As Acme, right, and and as of as, as Acme, right, my my users, you know, they might depending on their use cases, they might, you know, not really be able, you know, this, these quick syncs might not cover it for them. You might want to give them more options as far as what they can do in your integration environment. So if you, if you want to offer this, um, you can, you can, you can offer this, them the ability to actually start building recipes directly in your platform, right? So I'm still an Acme ERP, I'm still as Pied Piper, but now I'm actually in the recipe builder and actually, and I can actually build a recipe from scratch, right? Um, so lots of flexibility there. So, um, but what if you want something in the middle, right? You don't want to necessarily um, offer them, you know, all the options under the sun is, in, in terms of like actually building recipe from scratch, but you, but you need, they need to do more than just quickly sync something with, you know, with some small mapping elements in there, right? So what they can do is they can, you can offer them um, some automation templates. So as Pied Piper, I can see different templates. This is obviously Workday, right? I can see some templates that 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 you guys have decided as as Acme ERP to offer them that they can use um, based on use cases that you, that you think that they might um, that they might have, right? So let's say this looks interesting to me as Pied Piper. I can go ahead and view this template, and I can actually see the recipe as it exists in the recipe editor, and um, you know click into each into each step, right? See the configuration of each step, right? Um, and, and then if I want to use that recipe, I can actually use it and then, um, modify it if I need to, or just, you know, do some quick remapping and, and, and move forward with it. Right. So the, the, the end of, at the end of the day, there's a lot of the, you know, the bottom line here is that there's a lot of flexibility in how you offer this, 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 you know, I pass solution and embed it for your customers into your, into your platform as Acme ERP. Um, so that's all really cool. Right, but how do I actually manage all of this stuff, right? Uh, as Acme, uh, how do I provision my customers, my cu my customer accounts? How do I move, you know, recipes in and out? How do I actually, on a day to day basis, uh, manage this stuff? Because this is going to be where your, you know, ideally your non technical people are going to be living every day, um, you know, doing all the stuff for your customers and providing these these integrations. So, let me actually go back into the Workato platform here. And now I'm actually logged in as Acme. So I'm, I'm logged in as, as you in your, in your admin account. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Workato before, um, but I think if you have, the first thing you'll notice is that there's a lot, this is really similar to a normal account, a quote unquote normal account, right? You still have your recipes. Um, and in this section, this is where you 
or perhaps a partner would develop and maintain uh, those recipes that you would like to build for your customers within, with, for them to use in their, in their accounts. Um, generally, our partners uh, use this as a development environment to build and test uh, what we call template recipes and custom connectors that can then be inserted into individual customer accounts like Pied Piper uh, and for their use um, through our recipe lifecycle management tool. Um, and, and just like, um, like you would see in a individual you know, workspace or tenant account, I have the ability in this account to bring in, um, bring in team members and, and, uh, and actually collaborate with them within this environment. So if you have multiple people working together on building recipes, or working on connectors, you can bring everybody together to work in this one centralized account. Um, and uh, with a focus on team cooperation, uh, this admin account is designed for our partners to easily build, deploy, and uh, importantly, uh, maintain customer solutions without reinventing the wheel every single time you onboard a new customer. So you can build and keep those templated recipes in this account that might account for 80% you know, of your customer's use cases. Um, and although it looks like a uh, you know a you know a, a normal account, there's a couple things are are still different here, right? So of course at the top you'll notice that the logo has changed, right? And for your admin account, you can insert your own logo here as well as your own brand colors for the upper banner section. Um, and the key differentiator here, the most important thing between this special admin account and a normal tenant account, is this admin button. So if I click on this admin button and go into manage customers. Um, I can actually, um, I'm actually in the admin console now. So when we jump into our admin console, um, we're first going to land directly on our customers page. So imagine that this table of, I guess it says 91 customers um, is your list of 91 customers using this integration platform. So from here, you're getting a quick look at the management of them. And this whole purpose of this console would be to manage and maintain these integrations from both a go-to-market and billing perspective um, and you can track their usage through, you know, various metrics that we display. So you can also filter them down by what plan they're on. And I'll talk about plans in a minute, um, what statuses they, they have, if they're in trial or if they're active, different applications that they're using, et cetera, right? You can filter them down and, and, and organize this, this, um, this uh, admin console list of customers by whatever you want, right? Um, so if we want to actually add a customer, what does that look like? So if I click add a customer here, I can provide their name, the notification email. Um, and of course, when you're creating a customer, um, this would be a net new workspace or tenant, right? Um, you'd use this form. Um, the not notification email would tend to usually be someone within your organization, unless you want your customers to directly receive error notifications, which is totally fine too. Uh, and the plans, uh, which I mentioned before, are things that we would curate with your team uh, during the onboarding process. And this list would really depend on the go-to-market strategy. So for example, if you're using connection-based pricing, you can put your customers into five, 10, or you know, 20 uh, connection buckets, and then we're able to alert you once they've reached their limit. So the best part about this customer tenant provisioning process, um, I think, is that it can all be done programmatically, right? And it can be would be part of the whole onboarded or sorry, automated customer onboarding workflow that you could create, uh, which would involve programmatically creating users, giving them roles, um, assigning them a plan, et cetera, right? Um, so if I wanna click into this customer account, let's actually go into clone. Let's assume that clone is one of your customers, right? You can click into the account, see some high level metrics about how they're leveraging the platform. Uh, and for example, you can see what connectors they're using. If I go down to the bottom here, uh, or sorry, connections, and um, as well as the tax percentages and um, connections that they're using. These guys are on a limited plan. That's pretty nice. So they so they, they won't run out of connections or connect or, or tasks. But you can see those metrics here. So if I click on collaborators, I can also see the list of collaborators that are part of this account. Um, so you can see um, who in their account, you know, who they've invited into their account. If you want to actually give them access to their Ricardo tenant to like actually add users. You can see who they've added, who, who you, you've provided access to in that account. Um, and in the settings tab, um, uh, we have even more options for control over this user account. So this is where you could modify their usage plan or flag them as a trial account. Um, and the additional piece to all of this is actually being able to access the account and modify it just like any other admin within that account would be able to do. So 
given the right roles and permissions from an administrative perspective, you would be able to see this switch to a, this account button, which actually allows me to get into the tenant itself. Um, this is where our multi-tenanted approach to embedded customer management, I think really comes into play. So I click switch into this account, and now you can see up here, the this has changed, right? And now I'm actually in clones customer account as an individual account within this tenant. But I do, of course, roll up into your admin account that I've adopted. Um, so I've adopted your branding, right? Um, and obviously you've got purview into this account. So as a uh, professional services consultant or maybe a support rep, I can go into this account and create new recipes, enhance existing ones, fix bugs, or do whatever I need to do on behalf of the customer. And of course, the recipe that we started earlier um, within the um, Acme ERP integration hub uh, would be would be here, right? Um, so the other thing I can do is um, is click on community library. So um, should you decide to provide your customers access to it, they will also have the ability to search our community for new connectors, as well as pre-built recipes that they might want to leverage for their integration and automation use cases. So this ability to self-service will save your customer success and professional services teams lots and lots of time um, because a lot of times customers know what they want and they're technical enough, you know, which isn't really that technical on, on the Ricotta platform, but they're, they know enough about the platform to, to do this themselves and build from the ground up. Um, when, you, when you put it all together, um, the bottom line is that through our robust API platform, um, as well as iframes, right? Any of the Workato experience can be embedded into your platform. Um, hopefully this quick demo was able to demonstrate uh, the art of the possible within the Workato embedded platform from both a, a front end uh, perspective. Uh, so what your customers would experience and from a back end perspective, which is the, you know, the, all the admin tools that I just showed you. Uh, Workato embedded offers, uh, I think an instant product enhancement that is not only easy to set up, but uh, easy to manage and scale. So what are some of the key benefits of leveraging uh, a platform like this to deliver integrations and automations at scale for your customers? Um, first and foremost, speed. Um, your time to value for these integrations is drastically reduced. And in the vast majority of these use cases, your customers can just self-service and build their own if they need to. And second, I think the flexibility of the deployment options um, allows the platform to easily fit into your desired and user experience. Um, and finally, I think we can deliver a marketplace look and feel to your integration environment. That is something that many of the top SaaS companies out there are trying to offer. So at the end of the day, um, why choose Workato? Um, a few different reasons. Um, I think first and foremost, we're expediting, ex expediting sales, right? Through reduced friction in the sales cycle. Um, and in fact, we've seen a trend where SaaS buyers prioritize integrations in their buying criteria. Um, so help out your sales teams and 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 use a, an iPaaS platform. Um, yeah, I think they'll they'll thank, they'll thank you for that. Um, integrations can also help reduce churn, um, and in fact, I think it also helps in the stickiness factor um, by I think up to twenty five percent when your product is already integrated with four or more apps to to start off with. Um, and integrations can help reduce burden of the development on you and your customers. And um, you can you can you can also add a new recurring revenue stream by passing off the integrations costs as a separate revenue stream. Um, so your sales and CS teams are going to love this. Um, this is really you know this is something that as a product owner you will be ultimately probably be this decision maker on. But your sales and, and customer success teams are going to love it when you're able to offer them all this um, ease of use. Uh, 